Hello guys, welcome back to the channel, fucking annoying, um, yes, I am aware that my lips are blue and they look like I've been drinking a blue slurpee and forgot to wash my lips, um, yeah, I'm alone, so I decided to record some videos today, and today I decided I'm going to do a story time. Cause I said before that I was going to do this eventually. It's just such a long story. So this would be fun to edit. Um it's about a old roommate that I used to have and she was psycho. And I mean psycho. Um yeah, so let's get into it. By the way, that cute little thing over there with the weird glowing eyes, that's my cat. Hey, Gustus. I feel like eyes are twinkling. It's so weird. You look like a fucking alien or something. A little demon kitty. <laughs> so, this... This was about, like, maybe two years ago that this was taking place. And, um, yeah, she was a neighbor. It started out that I just would hang out with her a lot all the time and really like inseparable because at first she was really cool. I mean she was an interesting character, don't get me wrong. But um yeah she was interesting at first and we like right off the bat we were just like very open with each other. Like we'd tell secrets or like growing up our crazy like family life and stuff like that. So we felt like we understood each other like really well on that level. But um I don't know I don't know how much of it was true or not because I realized later on that she was kind of very, very dramatic with her stories and yeah. I don't know. I don't know what's true and what isn't. I'll probably never know and that's fun to me, I don't really care. But um yeah, so should I start with this? So she lived across the street from me. And I would hang out with her, uh, daily, for hours. And, um, yeah, we would just hang out, and eventually we just, I just ended up staying over her house, like, staying the night, for a couple nights in a row, and I didn't really like my home life at all. And it was just her and her kids, um... So I didn't mind just staying with her. We figured, well, might as well just come stay with you since I'm always here. And at the time, I had a living boyfriend. So he kind of had to stay with me as well. And I was like, is that fine with you? Like, because she didn't have any problem with him either. Like, we were all friends. Um, and he would come with me to hang out with her dog. And then sometimes he would just sit there and play video games and we would just chat, you know. He looks like a ball of black, I don't know. Anyways. Yeah, so we ended up moving in our clothes and our, not all of our stuff, but like some things we didn't want anyone else in my parents' house touching. Because we knew we weren't going to be there to see if it was taken or anything. So, yeah, we uh brought that to her house. And this was like a month, maybe a month and a half. And she started showing some of her true colors. And it was kind of hard to believe who side, like, who it really was. Like, who, um, was telling the truth and who wasn't. It was a lie. But, um, so what happened was she started saying that money was coming up missing from, like, a drawer of hers or something. And I would never steal anybody's money. Like, I... But, um, my boyfriend, he was accused of stealing it. She was like, I think your boyfriend stole my money. And to be honest with you, he has stolen stuff. Not money. I mean, not that I know of, but he has stolen people's stuff. Um, like, he'll steal, like, someone's, like, charger or he'll steal. He'll just steal really pointless stuff, honestly. Yeah, so... I didn't know who to believe. I asked him about it. He said I didn't steal anything. Like I, I would not. I didn't even know where this so-called money was. And she had other people coming in and out of her house too. So it's not like it could have been him. 
or whatever. Like it could have, but it doesn't mean it was him. But there wasn't any proof on either side, really. Um, so I didn't know who to believe. So it was awkward tension between us. And then she would see some of the stuff that my ex and me would get into, like our arguments and stuff. And like, he wasn't the perfect person. He wasn't a, um, he just wasn't for me. That's the thing that was. We weren't, we were not meant to be together. Let's just say that. Um, so she would start spreading our business out to all the other neighbors and get them talking. And where I lived, it was like gossip town. Like everybody knew everything or they wanted to know everything about each other. And it was really annoying. Um, so yeah, so. Yeah, but um, what made it worse was he started spreading rumors, especially to my parents, that my ex, that she saw my ex hit me. My ex is, no, he had, hadn't put his hands on me. Like, I don't understand why she was saying that, but I think, honestly, she was trying to separate us so that she can get me all to herself. And there's a lot of other reasons why that I'll get into why I believe that's true. So, yeah, a whole bunch of just, just commotion started happening between everybody in her house, like me, my ex, and, uh, her, like, they just started arguing, and she was like, I don't want him here anymore, I don't feel comfortable with him here anymore, I want him out, and I can't really say, hey, I'm a pain rent, like, I can't sit there and say, well, this is my place too, because that literally, I mean, honestly, it really wasn't, she just, we just hung out all the time, so we figured we'd just stay together at her place, really, but I did help out, I did help out with stuff, like, I wasn't freeloading on her, I'd help her, I'd babysit her kids, I'd give her babysitting money, I would bring food into her house, I'd bring diapers into her house, and she would sit there and say that I never did any of those things, and she never paid me back for any of it, but I never expected her to, because I'm living in her house, you know, but later on, as, um, things started getting, going downhill, she was saying, you owe me money, if you don't give me, like, I think it was, like, two, two hundred and fifty dollars, I think, something like that. If you don't give me my money, I'm gonna beat your ass and shit like that. And I'm just like, dude, I don't owe you anything. If I'd buy her cigarettes, too, like, I don't owe her anything. I honestly didn't. Because I would bring whatever I could into the house. And honestly, in my purse, I would find money missing from my purse. And she knew that's... I mean, like, it was my stupidity to keep it in my purse to begin with and not have it in a bank account. But, um, why would you steal from me? Like, I would always count my money regularly, and I knew what I had, and I knew what I didn't, you know? So, anyways, aside from that, my boyfriend at the time, ex, whatever you want to call him, he ended up moving out. He went back to his parents' house. Because me and him ended up getting in a big argument, and we ended up actually breaking up. Um, so, he moved out, and we stopped talking all together. I mean, we talked every now and then, because, like, we were still going through our breakup. And he wanted to get back with me, but honestly, I was like, nope, nope, I'm good. I've almost dealt with three years of your bullshit. I think you had enough time to prove yourself, and you failed. That's okay. Completely over that. Completely. Um, so yeah. Fast forward to that. Sorry that I'm spinning like a retard. Um, fast forward to that, and it was just me and her. Well, she started saying, hey, can you do this? Can you do that? Around the house? Can you clean the house? And stuff. And yeah, I would clean the house. I would do chores. I would do the dishes. And I would clean, um, up her living room area. Because she had kids that played toys and stuff. And, um... And then I would, um, make sure that her baby was fed. I mean, that wasn't my job, because I'm not her, their parent. But honestly, I kind of liked the experience, because the kids I actually got attached to, they were, they were so adorable, they were sweet. I mean, the baby baby, she was, a. I mean, she was like a baby baby. She was an infant, but she was she couldn't even cry yet. Um, she was a little, um, needy. She was, like, one of those babies that, like, scream when they're not being held and stuff. But she was so 
adorable and I loved I really loved like holding her and feeding her and stuff and learning like that it's really hard work to actually have a baby it's really it's tough so I I, I know that now before that I was like I want a baby so bad like sometimes that's still baby fever but honestly no I don't want kids um for a while I mean I do just not yet <laughs> But anyway, that's not the point of the story. Um, I'm getting off track of it. Blah. Topic because of my ADHD apparently. Um I just have a lot to say, I guess. Um, so yeah, uh, me and her, yeah, I do chores for her and stuff. But then I started realizing she had me do all of the chores and all of that. And she started going out a lot while I stayed at home with the kids. And um I wasn't allowed to go out with my friends. Like, if I did, she'd freak out. She would ask where I was when I was coming home. If I wasn't home at a certain time, she would lock me out. And I had a key, but it was only to the bottom lock. It wasn't to the top. And when she got in her mood, she would lock me out on purpose to show that, yeah, I'm pissed at you. You're not, you're not coming in here. And I mean, that's totally fine. It was her place. It's not mine. So, I would just go chill at someone else's house or my mom's or whatever at the time. But, um, yeah, she would literally blow up my phone and, like, cuss me out if I wasn't home. And text me and be like, where the fuck are you at? Blah, blah, blah. Like, she was my girlfriend or something. And I was, like, the boyfriend or whatever. Weird. And, um, and when I um started hanging out with my friends sometimes, she'd be like, so... Are we gonna um go here tonight and like uh go to the movies and see a movie? You said you were gonna take um uh, my kid to see a movie and like never said that. Like I said like we can sometime, but I never said it at this time. And when I said it, I don't think I'd be able to because I had to have a ride. We didn't have, either of us neither of us had cars and um, I didn't have a ride to even go to the movies. And she was pissed about it. She was like, wow, you're a fucking liar, blah, blah, blah. And got so upset about it. And then, um, as that went on, also, she would bring a lot of different guys, um, and, and she'd, like, hang out with them and stuff and do whatever. I'm not gonna put all her business out there like that, because it's not what the story's about. But, um, yeah, I had, like, one guy that was basically a guy friend and um we hung out a couple of times at her place and she would kind of embarrass me she would like when he'd bring alcohol she'd take the bottle and like drink the whole thing for herself and he'd be like dude that was like expensive as fuck and i'm like sorry i don't know why she fucking did that like that shit was embarrassing like I don't even, she just took the bottle in and just, like, poured a whole bunch in her glass or whatever and, like, stored it in her fridge, but it was, like, almost the entire bottle, and I'm like, what the hell is your issue? Um, so, yeah, I'm trying to remember everything that happened. Uh, she almost got us, like, stuck on the east side, that's another story, um, that I did on this channel. That was scary and dangerous. Yeah, she would like, get in my business and tell me what I could and couldn't do, like, with guys, like, not at her house, it's not what I meant, but, like, she'd be like, are you using protection, like, and I was with this guy, like, he was, like, my boyfriend, because I ended up dating him, I'm still with him, he's with me today, but she would get in my business and be like, are you using protection with him, and I'm like, dude, like, we just met, for one, and two, I don't think that's any of your business, like, what the hell? But, uh, yeah, she was just being really weird and getting in, like, our, like, personal business kind of thing. And if we were, like, making out on the couch, she'd come out and be like, what you guys doing? What are you doing in my living room? And we're like, freaking, just be a freaking creep. And it was so awkward and embarrassing, and I'm surprised that my boyfriend stayed, because <laughs> it was awkward being there, and I don't blame him. Um, if he felt awkward, and I know he did, but, um, yeah, so I fast forward, and she kept trying to cock-block us, 
you want to put it that way. Like, she didn't want us together. Like, whenever I would leave and go over his house and stuff, she was like, well, when are you coming back? Um, why are you always hanging out with him now? And blah, 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 and trying to guilt trip me. And, like, dude, we basically live together. I don't see what the problem is. You act like I don't talk to you. And also, she wouldn't be like, oh, no boyfriend over at this time unless you cleaning the living room first and stuff like that like fuck and uh sorry keep staring at the cat make sure he ain't getting into trouble there was also a time she, she said um it was like a fine for whatever he did and that it was like 50 dollar fine and she said if he came over he'd have to hide his truck and um like he couldn't spend the night anymore and at this time he lived over an hour well an hour away from where i was living at so if he came down he had well not all the time but most of the time he'd have to spend the night so uh yeah she just i was talking to him and saying oh well she said it's a 50 dollar thing or whatever and he was iffy about it too he was like that doesn't make any sense like i didn't do anything so I'm, uh, I ended up giving it the fifty dollars, and yeah, they're, they're, like basically she just ripped me off of money by making up some story, and it was just getting really annoying. Stop cat. Um, so things just started getting worse and worse. He just started making up a whole bunch of lies, being crazy, and there was one night I remember this. I had food poisoning. And I came over there, I, mean, I was like there, whatever, and I ended up having food poisoning that night. And she had another chick staying over. And at first she kept giving me this silent treatment. And I think maybe like a week before this happened, I told her I was thinking about moving out because I didn't have the money to, that she wanted. And she never told me I needed to pay money going into it. Because it wasn't really, like, I wasn't planning on staying there for, like, ever. It really wasn't. And I did start giving her money because I did feel bad. I felt like, I don't want you to think I'm mooching on you. But she started guilt tripping me. She started stealing from me. And she started um, getting kind of aggressive towards me when I couldn't give her anything. But, like, i try with anything that I could, even if that involved watching her kids. Got this? One more right now and yeah I just started realizing and she said that she was gonna cut me off if I moved out like she started just being like oh leave like everybody else like we're no longer friends like I can't talk to you and I can't trust you anymore which is really weird to me because usually like why would that have upset you that badly if you weren't trying to use me for something. Fast forward to what I was just talking about, the food poisoning. I was sitting on uh, the couch. I was not feeling well, like my stomach was burning, blah, blah, blah. You know how food poisoning goes. And um, I was just starting to feel the symptoms. And I, this was the first time I had food poisoning too, so I didn't know what the hell was about to go down, but it was bad. Um, she, yeah, she was giving me the silent treatment. And then she ended up, uh, what did she do? She, uh, started yelling in front of this girl that I've never met before. She starts yelling at her, and yelling at me, sorry. She's yelling at me saying, you know, when I'm de dead, you need to be able to be a caregiver or take, she was like saying she was gonna die. And that um, when she did, the kids were gonna go to me. Like, you don't even really know me that well. Like, yeah, we stay together and stuff, but why is that my responsibility, you know? like. I don't even got a fucking car. <laughs> How the hell am I supposed to get two kids back and forth where they need to go? Like, no, that was not my responsibility, and it never will be. But, um, yeah, so, she started yelling at me about that, and just saying, oh, like, you're supposed to be here for them, you're supposed to be here for us, you can be fake. Um, and then she started punching the door and the walls right next to me, and saying, you owe me fucking money if you don't owe me money. I'm gonna beat your ass. And this girl's just sitting there. Probably thinking I'm like some bitch or something. Like who the fuck are you? This is my friend or something like 
I and I'm just like this came out of nowhere, dude. Like the, before earlier during that day, we were fine. I think um I don't even know, but it was freaking weird. And it was very awkward and embarrassing. I'm just like, why well, would you sit there and make me look like something that I'm not in front of somebody? I've never even freaking met. That's just irritating as hell. Um, yeah, she just keeps on screaming and shit and just punching walls. And I'm just like, dude, I don't feel good. I really don't want to talk about this right now. If there's a problem, we can talk about it when I feel better. And sort it out, but there is no reason to be punching walls and shit over something that I never even fucking did. And she just wouldn't stop to the point where, like, I just, I just, I just wanted to go to sleep. And she ended up was just like, fuck it, I'm going to bed, blah, blah, blah. She went in the room with that chick that ended up sleeping in her bed, and I'm sleeping on the couch in the dark. And just trying to relax and feel better. And in the middle of the night, I ended up having to get up to go to the bathroom to throw up. I realized right there that I had food poisoning and it wouldn't stop and I ended up it's TMI but I ended up diarrhea everywhere. I mean I was wearing clothes thankfully, but I had to get in the bathtub, clean myself off. And she knew I was throwing up. Like she was like saying, You okay or something like that. She I heard them like still being up but like and talking kinda of quietly. But they wouldn't even come help me. Like they weren't saying, Hey, you alright? Like, do you feel okay? Like, do you need anything? Like, no, they just sat in there like, bitch, I could have been fucking dying in there. And, um, yeah. So, I was just sick. I, I basically had to sleep next to the toilet that night. And after that, and realizing that they weren't even gonna help me when I was that sick, I was like, These, this bitch is fake as fuck. She's not my friend. She's not. She's using me for whatever she can get out of me because I'm such a nice person. And honestly, I was scared that if I did leave that she would be stalking my ass. Like every time I came out of the house, she would threaten to jump me or something. I was terrified. I'm not going to lie because she gave that impression like she was going to kill me. And I didn't feel comfortable. And um, so yeah, I went, I ended up going home to my mom. Um, because I, I couldn't stay there, and I just didn't feel good. So I started staying there for a couple of days, and that's when I realized it was time to move out. It was time to get, get my shit and go. So I, man, this is a long-ass video. Longest video I ever fucking recorded, but, um, yeah, so I ended up leaving. And then when I felt better, I went to get some of my stuff. Like, when she was at home, I went and got... And that other girl was sitting there, and I realized that other girl was doing what I was doing. She was watching her kids while she wasn't home. Um, basically like a living baby babysitter, if you ask me. But, um, yeah, so I got some shit out, and I left. I went back to my parents, and then she started saying, when are you going to come back home? And I was like, I'm just going to start grabbing my stuff out, I'm not not going back to stay like I feel like it's best that I just stay up with my mom and I've been very sick like this lasted for like I don't know like a week maybe um and then the night that I was supposed to get the rest of my stuff I was with my friend and she was gonna go with me because I didn't feel comfortable going in by myself we were running a little late and she was texting me, blowing my phone up. She's like, if you don't get here at this time, I'm going to throw all your shit out on the fucking curb and blah, blah, blah. And just being a bitch about it. You know, she was just, um, and I'm like, dude, I'm coming right now. Like, can you give me a moment? And like, as soon as I did get there, she was like, your friend can wait out here. You can come get your shit and I'm going to watch you do it. Like, I was going to steal from her or something. Like, I don't want anything of yours. I just want my stuff. And a lot of the stuff that was there, I left. I mean, not a lot of the stuff, but, like, I, I took all my clothes and all the things that I um, really needed and I knew that at the top of my head that was there. Um, but I did leave a couple things there, but I was like, you can keep it. I don't want to go back there. I don't want anything to do with you right now. And you're really stressing me out. Um, so, yeah, I grabbed as much stuff as I could, put it in my bin. 
as they've been. And I put it in there. And, uh, I, I, yeah, I brought my keyboard out. So it was heavy. And it's, I think it was starting to rain, too. I don't even remember. But, uh, we were leaving. And she's like, sorry, it had to be like this. But I hope you know that after tonight, like, th there's no connection. Like, we can't be friends or whatever. And I'm like, okay. Fine. Like, I'm sorry I had to be like this, too, because I really didn't want this drama. It's very unnecessary. So, um, she helped me. My other friend. Not my other friend, but my friend. She helped me take myself back to the house. She started texting me on and on. And on Facebook, I had to block her because she wouldn't stop messaging me. She kept saying, like, where is my money? You owe me this money. If you don't, I'm still going gonna, gonna to jump you and blah, blah, blah. You better hope I don't see you outside. Um, and then she started accusing me of breaking into her house. Like, girl, I can't break in a house. I'm a weak-ass person. Like, I can't even climb into a window. This on the first floor. Yeah, so she was threatening, threatening me over text and saying I broke into her house. She was like, um, somebody said that they saw you come in here. I'm like, no, they didn't. They're lying that they did, and I know for a fact that they did. And she said she was going to call the cops on me and investigate and all that other crap. She never did that. Because it wasn't fucking true. And, yeah, so sometimes I'll still see her in, a, you know, like, um, public. And she'll, like, be very weird and, like, do these weird glances at me. Whisper whoever she's with about me. Um, she'll come up to me and... She so actually came up to me once. She was asking me, like, what kind of movies are out and stuff like that. And then I was like, well, what kind of movie I prefer or whatever. And I told her which movie. And she's like, okay, well, I already got my ticket, so have a good night. And that time I knew right there that she was trying to talk to me. You know what I mean? Like, trying to So hey, I'm here. And I acknowledge that you're there. I mean, that you're here, too. That's what I got from it. And it freaked me the fuck out. So, yeah, I just made it awkward, and I had somebody walk me to my car that night because I ain't trying to get jumped over something that I never did. Um, but yeah, so that's basically the whole story, at least what I can um, remember and put together, because it was, I was at least, I think I was there for at least about five or six months, that's, um, how long we um were uh cohabitating together I guess you can say but yeah it was pretty interesting pretty crazy it wasn't all bad she she could be cool at times but a lot of times you didn't know what she was going to do next it was scary so I hope you enjoyed this video if you stayed because I know it's long as fuck thank you because I really appreciate it um, like this video if you liked it. If you don't, that's okay too. I'm just chilling like a villain, you know. Um, yeah. So, until next time, see you guys later in the next video. Bye.